My name is Richard Cobden and I am the Engineering Manager at Amplicon. Specifying the correct cabinet for your products is not always as easy as you may think. During this presentation I will explain how a 19 inch rack is put together and what options are available. 19 inch cabinets are typically 800 or 600 millimetres wide. The internal frame which the equipment mounts to is what is fixed at 19 inches. 600 and 800 millimeter width refers to the total dimension including the side panels. 800 millimeter width cabinets are usually only necessary if there is a large amount of cabling which the additional width can more easily accommodate. Typical depths are 600, 800 and 1000 millimeters. Again this dimension is the overall depth including the front and rear doors. A typical 19 inch cabinet has a mounting profile in each corner. The mounting profiles are the main uprights which the equipment bolts to. The mounting profiles have square holes which are designed to take M6 cage nuts. The height of the upright is divided up by a cabinet dimension called a U. A single U is 1.75 inches or 44.45 millimeters. All equipment fitting into a 19 inch cabinet will have a height in U. A typical cabinet has two side panels, a front and a rear door. These panels are usually locked for security. As I mentioned, the internal mounting profiles have a fixed width of 19 inches. However, they are free to move front to back. When building a cabinet, the profiles are moved to accommodate such things as front rear cabling or equipment handles. Before you specify your cabinet, you need to look at the depth of the equipment you are fitting. Additional space needs to be allowed for such things as cables and handles. You would struggle to fit a 450mm deep product into a 600mm deep cabinet. This is due to about 50mm being lost due to the doors front and rear, together with the space necessary for mains and I.O. cables and equipment handles. Due to the depth constraints of a 600mm cabinet, we would typically specify a minimum depth of 800mm. This will provide sufficient clearance for equipment, handles and any I.O. cables. If a front door is not needed, the equipment can be brought forward to allow sufficient room at the rear. If there are any gaps between equipment, these can be finished with a blanking plate. This is a typical configuration of a test system. Ball bearing slide rails allow equipment to be mounted almost directly on top of one another as the mechanical fixing is at the sides. They also allow the equipment to be pulled forward for ease of servicing. If equipment is required to be pulled forward, whilst operating a cable management arm should be attached to the rear of the PC. Chassis runners are simply a pair of 90 degree fixed mounting angles which fix to the side mounting profiles. The unit then simply rests on these angles. The 2mm thickness of the chassis runners adds to the equipment U height, which means you have to leave a 1U gap after every 2 to 3 sets. Shelves are typically used for equipment which was not designed specifically for mounting in a 19 inch rack. These can be fixed or sliding. If your equipment is particularly heavy, you will need to check the loading capacity. Unless you have underfloor cooling, mesh doors are one of the most effective ways to stop equipment overheating. They are especially effective if the majority of the equipment is air-cooled, drawing in from the front and exhausting via the rear. If you are unable to use mesh doors, cooling is usually provided by roof fans. Fans pull air up through the cabinet and exhaust out of the roof vents. If the roof fans are providing insufficient air movement, additional fan trays can be added. Air conditioning units are usually considered as a last resort as they are costly. They are typically used when you have to use an IP rated cabinet due to the environment. Larger air conditioning units require the main unit to be fitted to an outside wall and piped to the cabinet. Power distribution units are basically power extensions for cabinets. They are commonly called PDUs. When specifying a PDU, you need to advise what style of sockets and cable plug you need. You also need to be careful that the power loading does not exceed the rating of the PDU. PDUs can be vertically or horizontally mounted. 
In some installations, a secondary safety earth is required. To facilitate this, a copper earth bar is fitted, which is connected to the main earth point. Equipment in the rack have rear earth studs, which are connected to the length of the earth bar. Amplicon provides a number of industrial accessories that complement a rack cabinet. We have a comprehensive range of 1U keyboard drawers with integral displays. These are also available with 8 and 16 wave KVMs. If your rack cabinet is being situated at a remote site, our remote power control systems are ideal. They will allow you to remotely turn each piece of equipment connected either on or off. This is ideal for power cycling equipment if it is locked up. Our range of remote KVMs will allow you to take full control of any PC fitted to a rack cabinet. This illustrates how the remote KVM and power control can be combined to provide a very powerful solution. The user can fully control each PC as well as power cycle it. Additional spare units fitted to the rack can also be brought online in case of a failure. We will advise you when your cabinet will be delivered. Please make sure someone is available to take receipt. We typically deliver cabinets tied to a pallet. Please make sure you have the appropriate lifting equipment for the size of cabinet being delivered. Lastly, please ensure your goods inwards doors are large enough for the cabinet to fit through. Our larger cabinets will not fit through a standard doorway. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you require further information regarding our cabinet range, please contact a member of our engineering services team on 01273 570 220. Thank you for watching.